Hey, great Sunday to everybody. It's a fantastic day. And boy, I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when I'm not quite absolutely ready to release something and I don't just put it out until I feel it's got some initial starting point capabilities that can be built upon rapidly or that the major objective of what I'm putting out is for the most part encapsulated and a part of what was built and deployed. So I'm glad I waited and boy, did that waiting and the digging and the digging and the digging in the cave find the gold. And uh, now I feel really, really good about not only the Scalper strategy release ahead, uh, I'm gonna actually now do it in two phases. I think that'll massively simplify. My programmer talked me into that and he's right. It's very smart, the idea he came up with. And I'm going to be having a major iGrid system update where I'm going to add something new that I've been evaluating, which has definitely slowed me down to see if it had an impact and boy, does it have an impact. So I've been evaluating different types of math that I knew of in the past. Uh, so when I first put out the iGrid indicator, I've incorporated, there's a way that there's math done by the programming, the code and some looping uh, in the code. I guess that's kind of the, the hack term we come up with uh, or what we call it internally is there's some way that the coding is done where we're looking at price multiple times sequentially in like a loop. Uh, that's kind of a programming thing tied into the math. And then on top of that, we put some additional filtering, known filtering, that's you know somewhat unique that you can select in the indicator. Uh, but now I found some different math that I've now verified will work fantastic in the indicator, especially for lower time frame. And here's the key in lower time frame applications, not necessarily higher time frame, the lower the time frame you get, you, uh, the lower the time frame you go, you get a lot of cyclical activity and price that you have to put up with. It's all over the place. Cyclical reversals, uh, cyclical continuation, cyclical consolidation. They're all over the place. There's capture, cyclical activity, reversal. You know, capture, cyclical activity, reversal. They happen a lot. Uh, on lower time frames, I mean, they're all over the place. So, you know, stuff that I've always seen. There's very direct reversals. That's not what I'm talking about, but we do get cyclical consolidation too. You know, price goes up, pushes a high. If I'm not mistaken, that was a level sweep, comes back, they grab it, they, they consolidate, they push it. In this case, they fail to make a higher high. We have a lower pivot high. You have a short signal there, then a short. Now you're taking a short on a lower pivot high and you get some cyclical activity and then it breaks down, cyclical breaks down, starts to accelerating. So there's cyclical activity everywhere. Standard indicators get their asses kicked by this cyclical activity. And the lower the time frame you go, especially when you're on time-based charts, and this is pretty clean actually, this is on the, our grid Renko. Uh, and we're fixing an item in the grid Renko. The grid Renko was supposed to be able to do back testing uh, right out of the gates. And it's funny, I have a version of the grid Renko that is back testable just fine. And then we have another one we're doing experimenting with that uh, I guess uses less resources, a little more efficient. And that one we need to go in and turn on or the capability to make sure it's back testable. So we're gonna be doing an updated grid Renko out to the group right away in the week ahead. We've figured out why the one we put out uh, wasn't, uh, uh, you know, doing or having optimization and backtesting capabilities. So we're going to uh, update the grid Renko. I'm also on deck now for an upgrade to the iGrid indicator, whether you're using it in the scalper, iGrid scalper that's been out for weeks now form as an indicator uh, or the iGrid Evo that we use with our original strategy. So lots of important details to announce here. So it's that cyclical activity. 
Now, when you go to time-based charts, the cyclical activity <clears throat> can be even elevated and even more problematic for basic indicators. And as you can see here, my iGrid indicator, even in a basic form, can handle cyclical activity with a little bit of dialing in just fine. But there's a certain type of math that I've been wanting to look at, adding it to the iGrid system, and wow, is it very strong. So let's go talk about that. So the math that I'm adding as a integral part of a version of the iGrid is math that's been out for a while. Uh, gosh, I've probably seen the math out there for 15, 20 years. I knew at some point I wanted to find a way to integrate it into the iGrid tools. Uh, the math I had in the at the onset was already ready to go, but I wanted to go down the rabbit hole, and I've spent two months digging into this math, and I'm finding out most of the indicators where they offer this type of math, in my opinion, they're using it wrong. I found a few that are using it right. So, and that's important. It's, it's important to find modeling and find examples to save time from building a bunch of stuff from scratch where it's being used right, and then analyze that to compare it to what, how I was going to use it. And wow, is this going to be very significant upgrade to the iGrid system. Now, uh, my programmer has been very uh, patient with me as I've been having him work on one core project and then constantly slinging in these zingers from the side. Hey, cool that for a second. Go, go build this for me real quick. I want to go test this. Okay. Then he gets back to the main project. Okay, now do this. And then it's just been constant. Uh, that's been a lot of reason why I'm slow on stuff. And uh, I've been involved with a very significant move uh, and uh, just been super busy on some major, major projects, uh, very major projects that are all going to start launching this month. Uh, but anyhow, I will be taking this math now in the right way that I've verified is the right way to use it is very different than many others use it and I'm going to incorporate it into the iGrid and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a version of the iGrid indicator the Evo that will just be this kind of math no other options uh, first thing just kind of jamming it into the existing iGrid indicator uh, I think it'll be smarter to just have this one be standalone because of how, how profound the difference is and what the difference is is this indicator with this type of math on board has a high level of capability of ignoring cyclical activity that is not uh, strong enough to actually change direction of price. So it, it can ignore certain types of cyclical activity, and that's important. Now, this is a time-based chart. So that's where you're going to typically get your highest amount of cyclical activity that would confuse standard indicators. But even on a super, super low time frame, having the ability to go in and, and still have very precision movements of price that you can capture. So let's see if it'll let me draw. Come on, drawing tool. You know, from one to another, to another, to another, to another on very, very low time frame that I can utilize that for automated quick scalping. So the key is, is on average, can I capture movements of price, and we'll call this an up cycle, to a downtrend cycle, to an uptrend cycle, so that I can efficiently, even when the market gets a bit chop choppy, even when I'm having situations where I'm having quick flips from one upside momentum signal suddenly to a downside momentum signal, that the differentiation is never uh, excessive to take away a lot of profits from the successful uptrend and downtrend cycles, where the amount of movement I caught was enough that it made, it, it made the trade worthwhile to be involved with. So then when the market is a bit choppy or goes into consolidated cyclical activity if i'm if i am
back and forth because I'm maybe dialed way in on a really low time frame, I can hold my own in the chop, but make sure I'm uh, getting paid on the moderate to large cyclical uptrend and downtrend moves. So I'm sure that makes sense to you. So I've been spending a lot of time with this. I've never talked about it. I've kind of hinted that I'm working on stuff. I just decided that since the scalper automation has been so late, I kind of want to put the bigger picture together. A lot of times when you don't hear from me a lot and things are quiet, it's because I'm working on something that I feel is substantial and I'm trying to stay focused on it without a bunch of distractions, even though I always have 10,000 distractions in my life, especially going through a move, trying to help my girlfriend get uh, full immersion care for autistic daughter that's kind of gone off the deep end, psycholo or you know, cognitively, massive cognitive decline last four months, but I found a very uh, high-end, full immersion type therapy place. We had to move from one state to another to get access to it. So sometimes in life, you got to do what you got to do. But in and amongst all this, and, and then getting to a place and not having our place ready and having to wait two weeks in extended stay type hotels, waiting to move in with everybody yelling and screaming at me, hey, sometimes that's when I do my best work because I just stay focused. Uh, it's it's kind of like flying a B-17 over, uh, you know, over a target and there's flak going all around you. That's actually when you got to focus the most, you know, stay on track. Hey, navigator, are we getting over target? That then in this case is my programmer. Okay, we're over target. Okay, now I do my job. Release away the, uh, you know, open the bomb bay doors, release the payload and turn around and get your butt home. Well, that's the mode you got to get in sometimes. Ignore the flak, ignore everybody. And there's a good saying in the military, and they even talk about movies sometimes. It's when your soldiers aren't yelling and screaming at you when you got a problem. When they are, everything's just fine. And I get that. So anyhow, we're going to have some very significant positive developments that are going to be deployed here. Uh, the simplified version of the Scalper Strat version 1 is now ready. I'm going to put that out. Uh, it, it's supposed to be done today. We chopped one thing out of it. I'm going to test it today. If I like it, we add in code protection. Uh, we add in the activation deactivation process. I won't roll it out on Monday. My Monday's loaded up. I have some institutional side trading stuff I have to deal with tomorrow to meet some time schedules. So I'm going to try to then uh, the official launch then for the scalper strat. I'm going to shoot for Tuesday later in the day, like midday to later. I don't want to do it in the morning when everybody's trading and get everybody distracted. So we're right there. Then uh, all of this stuff is going to go on CTrader too and some of the other platforms. So all of the improvements, the new cyclical, uh, the math that can, uh, I guess you could say, can, can deal with cyclical activity even better than any of our current math. So lots of very major developments, very significant improvement to the iGrid giving you even more capability and more options for use. And uh, all of this lends to giving us better tools for that low time frame, quick strike trading, where you go get in, get out quick for your prop trading, for evaluation side and for once you're live, because these are the type of trades where you have very defined entry points and risk, uh, risk per trade, that's very defined, so you can keep grabbing, you know, two and a half, three to one, and so on, on average of all closed out trades. Frequently, that's the type of trading that never will put your account at risk, especially when you can do it with a little bit lower position size than normal and get to your daily profit objectives as efficiently as possible. So I've been working on a lot of stuff. I've been working then on putting this math in an updated version of the bands. That's where I first was working on it. So I'm going to get an updated version of what used to be my new algo bands with the math in it. So lots of things are all coming together now. And I appreciate the patience. I appreciate the extended time. Onward and upward, this all is leading to something all by design. And uh, we're going to have a fantastic month of September. 
and a significant end of the year with some great new updates to the iGrid system tools. Have a great day. Talk to you all soon.